So we've got a lot of politicians in New Hampshire trying to figure out how to deal with this. And some of them, frankly, are trying to take advantage of it. And some of them are trying to run away from it as much as they can. Um, I've done my best to be consistent and clear on this issue. And what I'll say today is what I said when I stood up at that SCOBY hearing in Ridge. I have serious concerns about this, um, including uh, if you draw a line from Pennsylvania to Drake in Massachusetts, why does it come through New Hampshire in the first place? Uh, where is the gas actually going to go, and who's going to pay for the full cost of building it? Um, why is there one environmental impact statement being put together instead of one jointly for the various pipelines that are currently being considered in our state? Um, if you look at our state energy strategy, it says we need to diversi diversify away from fossil fuels. Um, and why are we then considering building a multi-decade infrastructure project that invests more in the capacity to have more dirty natural gas um, in our state? Those are serious questions. I have said I will not support this project unless someone gives me good answers to those questions. I haven't heard good answers to those questions. Um, I am going to continue asking it because one of the things that we can do when we are in government is ask the tough questions and demand that we get answers for them. Um, so I've done a couple other things on this issue. Um, and I think they're examples of the sort of thing that we can do along the way where we work together as community activists and elected officials to try to make an impact on what is right now an out-of-state company trying to force its will on the people of New Hampshire. So one is there was an intervening statement period that was open until I think it was the 3rd of January, that their website went down for about a week and a half uh, mm -hmm. over the Christmas holidays. And I called the Attorney General and I asked the, to, that we formally as a state ask that they extend that deadline, which it was done for a couple more weeks. 2,000 different interveners have intervened in this case, including the state of New Hampshire itself, as well as I think six different state agencies. Um, now intervene basically means that you reserve your right to be a party in future legal action, or you get notified about all the ins and outs of this. Um, and then the more recent thing that I've done is we asked, and not just me, me and other executive counselors, asked the state for specific lists and maps of every state property that would be impacted by the proposed pipeline. Uh, and I put those up on social media about a week and a half ago now that shows detailed plots of land, Rhododendron State Park. Um, that's over, I represent the town of Winchester, which is one of the 11 towns that's on the project. Um, I think that sort of getting that information out so that folks, folks can look at the exact plot of the route and how it will impact state lands in their area is going to enable people to ask good, tough questions about it. I wish I could stand here and tell you that there will be a vote on the State Executive Council or that the governor will have a bill that he or she will sign or not sign that will make this project happen or not happen. The fact is uh, our federal law, so if you have a issue with this, and I do and I'm asked about it, you should go talk to our congressional delegation and senators to see if they'll change it. Um, our federal law says the FERC, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, can decide if they decide to approve this project, they can take by eminent domain land that the state objects to them taking. 